Do you want to know and test the performance or latency of your magnetic keyboards? Well, this video is for you. So let's get started right away with the first method, Way. This is probably the easiest and the cheapest because it's free. You just have to download Keyboard Inspector. You can get it in GitHub. I'll be putting it in the description, the link. This will test the polling rate of your keyboard. After you install Extract the File, you can run this application immediately. Then just click Start Recording and press your keyboard. The longer you do this, the more accurate, of course. But around 10 seconds should be good enough. So after that, just stop recording. And then you'll see a graph over here now i'm sure these other graphs are also useful but what i really use the most is this one in the middle this tells you the polling rate of the keyboard and as you can see right now it's kind of showing only up to 2k so just click this times two to expand and as you can see our keyboard is on 8000 hertz polling rate with that spike over there now i'll also give you a little example with a 1k hertz keyboard over here start recording after pressing and releasing the keys multiple times as you can see 1000 hertz polling rate this is normally the pattern if you have a 1000 hertz polling rate keyboard so yeah it's quite easy to test the polling rate of the keyboard but how about the actual milliseconds and latency well we do have some ways and one of those ways is using something like an xlat or something like this this is the osl ttcs from tech team gb but yeah you can use these guys or something like the xlat to test the mouse latency i see many people either soldering or clipping the stuffs on the PCB of the mouse. Now, since we're going to be using it for keyboards, I'm not sure if you can do it for keyboards, like soldering it on the PCB and clipping stuffs. But what I saw though is using something like a conducting tape and starting the countdown when that conducting tape comes into contact with whatever, something that can detect the contact. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Wooting did something similar in their Computex event. But instead of the OSL TTCS, they used an XLAT. But yeah, the OSL TTCS should be as good. It's just that the XLAT has a screen on it that you can actually see real time, which is pretty nice. But from what I can see, these are more easily attainable or available if you just wanna buy. I'll put it in the links in the description. But yeah, you can also use this to, again, solder or use sound. It does come in with the mic if you choose that but using sound is kind of not that fast though so you might get like extremely low milliseconds but yeah i'll be using this latency tool for my future videos when i'm reviewing some magnetic keyboards or comparing them which a lot of you have requested so here you go we finally have a latency testing tool which seems pretty accurate i also tested this on a different computer actually i was wondering that maybe if i had a better computer it might give me better performance so i actually used this with my brother's computer as well that has a 1050 ti and compared to my computer that has an rtx 4070 super they do have pretty similar results so that's good the performance of your computer does not affect the performance or latency test results now i did encounter some problems though i I mean they're not really a problem i wouldn't call it a problem you might even see it as a good thing but yeah if your keyboard clicks or actuates accidentally that kind of causes the latency tool to bug and give us like an extremely low number now i think what's happening is there's already an input actuation when this hits the conducting tape so it's not really the pressing that's causing the actuation which will give us an inaccurate and extremely low results so in order to actually get accurate results you will have to set your key keyboard to the right settings where it doesn't accidentally actuate so for example some keyboards have a 0.005 millimeter accuracy and you can actually use that low actuation point without any dead zone now that's gonna cause some accidental activations so we won't be able to test the keyboard with those settings but it's a good thing i think as well because you're not really going to be using the keyboard on 0.005 millimeters when it's going to be accidentally actuating your keyboard and can cause you to actually perform not good so yeah again what's the point of testing extremely sensitive settings that you're not going to be able to use anyway when actually gaming so yeah in a good way this latency testing tool will be able to give us more accurate results on the actual usable settings in real world when gaming but of course when i'm going to be using this latency testing tool i'm going to be setting the keyboard to the best fastest settings i can without it accidentally actuating still so i'm still going to try my best to get the lowest milliseconds but yeah since the osl ttcs doesn't have a screen over here you will have to install the software which is pretty easy you can also view the graphs there all of the results even export it to excel oh and yeah speaking of results here are some results i got with the osl ttcs but before that i actually want to talk a little bit about
out how to set up this latency tool to be specific the OSLTTCS. if you get the kit you'll be able to get this clip thingy where obviously you will be clipping the conducting tape that also comes in with the kit itself if you buy it you will have another one which doesn't have that crocodile clip but this is what you will be using to press the key or put into contact with the conducting tape for it to actually start counting down and then of course you will stick the tape the conducting tape to the key of the keyboard you want to test for example i have my wasd on very sensitive settings so i want to test out the w responsiveness stick the tape there then after that take this part and just you know click it but yeah what pretty much happens is once this comes into contact with the conducting tape a countdown starts and then it will wait for a keyboard input and once that is sent it will stop the countdown and we will get the pretty much the latency from when you touch the key the keycap and when it actually sends the signal to the computer now yes the faster you go and the slower you go might affect a little bit the latency results because of course the faster you go the faster it will also actuate but i mean if the keyboard is on 0.1 millimeter settings and very sensitive there's pretty much gonna be no difference like as long as you're not intentionally going so slow like but yeah, again i doubt there's gonna be any difference since the distance is already so low 0.1 millimeters so no matter if you tap very fast or slow there's not enough pre-travel for it to make a difference you know what let's actually go ahead and plug this in and i'll show you so yeah when you plug it in and it gets detected the osltt will light up green over here like so let's give this keyboard a name jk68 this is going to be the tap input but yeah, you can also do again audio jack two pin where you actually solder it to electrically actuate the keys but this is more for the mouse i'm not sure if you can do it for a keyboard again but yeah tap input and then select which you want to test where you doing clicks or key presses and then keyboard of course then if we're ready just press start okay let me actually reposition the tape in a more convenient tapping position okay let's start again the test i'm gonna do 20 but i do recommend getting more for a more accurate average but yeah let's do 24 now you'll see this blink every time we tap okay i just did 20 taps but i want to try doing another just decent tap then for the last one as fast as i can just to see the difference in milliseconds depending on how fast i tap it but again with how little the pre-travel is i doubt there will be much difference but okay here's a decent tap now here's as fast as i can tap not sure if you saw it but i did try as fast as i can on the last one but yeah after you're done with the test just click this button and we'll see the results so as you can see we got an average of 1.153 milliseconds we got a minimum total of 0.9 and 1.4 on the max and to check the more individual results just click this and as you can see it does go up and down that's why i do recommend doing a lot of taps to get a more accurate average but yeah 20 is pretty accurate but yeah, as you can see the last one over here is the fastest tap i did and the one over here is like a decent tap including this one that actually got lower than the fastest tap i did but if we want more accurate results it actually does make a xl file so let's open that up and over here we'll see the first tap we got 1.383 milliseconds we did do 23 as you can see and on the last one this is the fastest tap i did 0.939 milliseconds and then the 22nd one the second to the last tap this is a decent not too fast not too slow one millisecond so there's like a difference of less than 0.1 millisecond difference so like zero point let's do a some maths over here 0.078 millisecond difference even though i did try as fast as i can and just a decent speed so yeah again you i don't think you need a solenoid rig of course that will give you a more decent speed on whenever you're tapping a key but doing it with your finger should be enough and it's a more simple way but yeah with this keyboard this is the gk68 from skylung this is the aluminum version i'm um, review coming soon we did get an average of 1.153 milliseconds this is 8000 hertz polling rate the w key that we just tested is on pretty sensitive settings 0.1 millimeters actuation point and i'm pretty sure 0.1 millimeters dead zone let's double check 
Yeah, I'm on 0.1mm press, and I'm on 0.1mm dead zone. So yeah, 0.1mm actuation point. And with this setting, it does not accidentally actuate. So this is actually usable in-game when you're actually playing. Now, if you're curious how a 1000Hz magnetic keyboard will perform against this 8000Hz magnetic keyboard, let's do a little test as well. I got the Mad 60HE again over here, the base, the most cheapest version. And let's double check the software settings as well for my W because that's that's what we're gonna be testing over here. So as you can see, 0.1 millimeters as well. And we actually don't have any dead zones set. You know what, let's just add that as well for the bottom as well. So it doesn't, you know, double click. So yeah, these are my settings for the W. Let's put that over here. Make sure that doesn't accidentally actuate. Okay, now let's start the test and let's do a similar number of taps just like on the GK68. After that, click the button and here are the results. We got an average of 3.4 milliseconds, minimum of 2.5 and 4.7 on the max. So okay, comparing the results, the 8000 Hz GK68 is faster by 3.441, 1.153. The 8000 Hz GK68 is faster by 2.288 milliseconds. And you know what, for better accuracy, let's do the GK68 one more time. Let's see if we'll get a similar result to or close to 1.1 milliseconds let's start the test and yeah, as you can see, very similar results, average of 1.1 milliseconds. The first test result with the GK68 over here earlier, you saw it was on 1.153. So yeah, around pretty much the same. Again, the more you do it, the more taps you do, the more accurate the average is. I mean, this is already pretty accurate. But yeah, I also tested the Wooting ATH over here on 0.1 millimeter actuation point and 0.15 millimeter on rapid trigger. 8,000 hertz spoiling rate, of course. It's the lowest settings you can go without it accidentally actuating from what I've found. I actually tested it two times, both 50 taps, one with the default Wooting ATHE cable and one with the WL mouse Ying cable that I've been using from their keyboard. And yeah, both are pretty similar results. Now, I actually already sold my Wooting ATHE. No, don't get me wrong. I think it's an amazing keyboard. It's just stuck on my shelf. I wasn't able to use it. That's why I sold it. But I was still able to do this test because of my friend David. He let me borrow his Wooting ATHE and the Wooting 60HE Plus that I'm currently testing, as you can see. But yeah, huge thanks and shout out to him. If you're around the Philippines and you're interested in purchasing mint condition used peripherals like keyboards, gaming mouse, mouse pads, he actually does sell a lot of them. You can go ahead and check him out on his Facebook page. I'll be putting it in the links in the description or just search David Soria. But yeah, going back to the latency tests, I did try the Wooting 60HE Plus with its default cable and as well as the WL mouse cable that I used earlier. Same testing. I did set the key to the most sensitive settings it can go without accidentally actuating. And yeah, there isn't really much difference between the Yin cable and the Wooting cable that I used. But yeah, comparing the Wooting 8HE and the 60HE Plus results, obviously the 8HE will be on top with its 8000 Hz spoiling rate compared to the 1000 Hz spoiling rate of the 60HE Plus. But they do have the Wooting 60HE V2 that will probably have the same performance as the 8HE with the 8000 Hz spoiling rate. So yeah. Now, of course, after testing the Wooting 8HE, we also got to test the Easy 80, which is apparently faster than the Wooting 8HE. Now, I don't think IQNix is lying with the test results results and with that testing method that's the actual results they got but i think that is also on one of the most sensitive settings you can set the keyboard to but as you can see this is currently let's do 0.1 millimeters which is the lowest we can go on the actuation point 0 0.005 0 0.005 and no dead zone save that and let's see now look at this i'm just gonna wiggle wiggle the keys look at that whoa especially the w so these are definitely gonna be pretty much unusable in game on 0.15 millimeters yeah not really accidentally actuating so let's test this with these settings okay i just did 50 and here are the results wow that is pretty impressive it is very very close pretty much on the same level as the Wooting 8he but if you can use this keyboard on 0.1 millimeters i'm i think you can beat the Wooting 8he with this one but yeah again maybe in the future if we get more stable switches i that's definitely possible but yeah from what you saw 0.15 millimeters is going to be the ideal lowest actuation point you can actually use this keyboard with without it accidentally actually 
fluctuating you know it's not going to be usable with accidental activations but yeah with those settings and this testing method it is not going to be able to beat the Wooting ATHE but I think they are on pretty much the same level yes the Wooting ATHE is faster by less than 0.1 millisecond like bro 1 millisecond is already crazy hard to notice like less than 0.1 millisecond difference but yeah I can definitely see the easy 80 over here beating the Wooting ATHE if we can actually just use a bit, a bit more sensitive settings but yeah again I don't really want to test that if you're not really going to be able to use that when gaming but yeah so far here's all of the keyboards I've tested with the OSL TTCS don't worry though because there's going to be more latency tests in the future and more magnetic keyboards there on that list and as I mentioned in my future review videos I'm going to be doing some latency testings with them with the OSL TTCS and yeah I'd be happy I'm interested on in how it would compare to the top magnetic keyboards in the market but okay now let's go ahead and move on to the next and last latency performance testing method but before that I want to thank today's video sponsor VSD inside they sent me two of their stream docs the VSD M18 and N1 I do love how it looks like and how customizable it is I customized each button over here here are the apps that I normally use a lot whenever I want to play music fast forward increase the volume decrease very customizable through their app VCD craft but as you can see there is so many other things you can do other than these guys I've set over here I already kind of showed you earlier but yeah you can do sound effects Wow. You can even make it show you useful notes, different time zones, the weather, even set timers. So for one minute or going forward, the calendar, like there's so many things that you can do. But another thing that I really like is you can turn the N1 over here to a calculator. So look at this. Just press the knob and scroll. There we go. So 123 plus 85 208 so yeah if you're interested in some stream docs and i'll be putting this in the description the link where to buy it from again thank you so much vsd inside for sponsoring this video wow now VSD inside seems pretty new but they also look pretty legit but still I do recommend double checking doing your own research before buying. But anyways going back to the next performance latency testing method and the last as well for the list of this video. Actually this method I won't be able to do myself but I've seen it a lot of times from my friend the AimAdapt. Now he does have a solenoid rig but I'm pretty sure you can also just use your fingers here but of course a solenoid rig will give you a more consistent speed and results. But yeah the most essential equipment for this method is the high speed slow motion camera it's pretty straightforward you can put them side by side on a video or just count how many frames from when your finger or the solenoid rig hits the key and when you'll actually see the result from your screen and yes you can definitely get the milliseconds by you know doing some maths one frame is equal to this many seconds all that stuff but yeah what i really like about this testing method is you can actually see real time the moment it does hit the key and how many frames milliseconds it takes to actually pop up on the screen the the change and the actuation though i think this is also one of the most expensive setups because a high speed slow motion camera is gonna cost you now this isn't really a requirement but i can imagine having a low refresh rate monitor is not gonna be good if you're gonna do this test but i can't speak much about this because i haven't tried it yet and i haven't done it yet but yeah i think this testing method is more practical for comparing two keyboards putting them side to side which is faster which is not what i see from aimadapt is it does 10 times the test and out of those 10 times he compares to which screen changes first and what keyboard is used and that's how you'll know which keyboard is faster and another actually possible or pros of using this method is the release you can also actually see the release and test it out which release is faster but i think it might be possible in the future with the osl ttcs and xlat method hopefully maybe in the future like maybe when the conducting tape stops or loses contact that's when the countdown starts pretty good idea i think but yeah those are going to be the ways the methods on how to test the latency and the performance of your magnetic keyboards i'm sure there's more out there that i haven't mentioned i just shared what i know and what i've been doing what i've found out and what i'm going to be doing more in the future but yeah i pretty hope that this video helped you in some way and hopefully showed you how you can test your keyboard latency and i guess i kind of wanted to make this video as well just to give you guys a little update on you know my latency testing tool that i'm going to be using more on my future videos so if you don't want to do all of those stuffs or spend money then don't worry because i'll be doing it for you guys be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my latency tests and reviews in the future but yeah i'll go and see you guys in the next one don't forget to stay grateful and remember jesus loves you bye bye